After my drive the day before from Oklahoma and across Kansas, I was now well within the path of the upcoming solar eclipse. It was day four, and I awoke well before sunrise to a foggy landscape. Packing up, I headed out into the sand hills as the sun rose and burned off the atmosphere of pea soup. It was a new day, and I was bound for Carhenge. Expedition, and I am crossing the South Platte River, headed in the general direction of Carhenge. As you can see, we have a little bit of fog here in Nebraska this morning. I'm going to be driving through the Sand Hills region, a pretty unique area of the country. Well, the sun is uh, breaking clear of the fog a little bit, and uh, I expect it won't take too long at all for this fog to burn off, and we'll be able to see some of this very interesting uh, scenery around here, the Sand Hills of Nebraska. town of Lisco, Nebraska. Before I came on the trip, I used my maps and plotted what I hope is a more interesting route on tiny roads up to Carhenge. There are three blue lines on my map, and they represent the southern path of totality, the northern path of totality, and the central path of totality of the solar eclipse. That one there is the southern line. So we're right on the very, very edge of where people will be able to see the total eclipse. and uh, farmhouse and uh, outbuildings and a bunch of old equipment. The road surface is uh, a little soft, but other than that, it's uh, smooth going.
can see on my topo map that uh, Alliance is located right on the center line of the eclipse. All right, I am gassed up and headed out of Alliance. I'm getting ready to turn to the left here. There's some long trains that are look like they're stopped. Well, there's a train headed this way because I passed him. Need to watch out what you're doing there. And looks like we're getting back out here on real county roads. This was a lot narrower than the one I was taking earlier this morning. contribution to pagan beliefs. In some ways, a tribute to the sun, isn't it? I'm leaving car hence. I like that. That's pretty cool. Now I'm going to head up to the town of Chadron, which is right next to Nebraska National Forest. Did you know Nebraska has a national forest? Did you know that Nebraska's national forest is man-made? This I've got to see. These are the first sunflowers I've seen. This is a pretty big field. And here we are in a man-made national forest. The sand hills proved to be a beautiful drive. Carhenge was the quirky roadside attraction I had expected, and the uniqueness of a man-made woodland certainly made the Nebraska National Forest a special place to spend some time. The next morning I cottywampled westward, meandering generally along the path the moon's shadow would follow a week from this day.
Welcome to Wyoming. This is the area of the Texas Trail, which uh, was used for cattle drive as far north as Montana from 1876 to 1897. My route would take me through Grand Teton National Park, but I was disappointed that the light was poor for photography, and the headwind was fierce. So rather than fight the conditions, I found a room for the night in Dubois and hoped for better conditions in the morning. Mm -hmm. 